On our interview today, we are going to talk with an expert. She is the Dr. Parvati Nair. Good afternoon. Bueno, buenas tardes. Buenas tardes. Good afternoon. Mrs. Nair is the founding director of the United Nations University Institute on Globalization, Culture and Mobility. She is also professor of Hispanic Cultural and Migration Studies at Queen Mary University of London, where she was formerly the director of the Center for the Study of Migration. First and foremost, migration and globalization. You will agree that uh, migration is a global issue in the 21st century. Are the countries treating the matter as a common issue? Are the tr countries to treat the matter as a common issue? Y yes, to some extent. Migration is a human issue. It's a social issue. It's a planetary issue. I think migration is really at the core of the story of humanity itself. So it is something that is uh, common. Uh, to all countries. However, I think countries also need to refine and nuance the ways in which they approach the formation of policies around migration and to take into account different uh, factors that, uh, that condition the uh, context of migration. And th those are much more difficult issues to address. So yes, it is a common issue, but it's also a very complex issue. And I don't think that uh, the world has yet really understood, firstly, how uh, widespread migration is and how fundamental migration is. Because we think of communities and nations as solid, settled places. But in fact, migration is part of the story of all humanity. And so I think it's very important for nations states, policymakers, to rethink migration from a human perspective. And uh, let's talk about uh, Europe as an example. In the case of the European Union, uh, Klaus Sonnensen, General Director of the Directorate General Humanitarian Aid and Civil Protection at the European Commission, said that the efforts must be focused to solve the problems of the countries from where the migrants come. Nevertheless, it seems that this strategy is not working. Also, the closed borders position uh, doesn't seem to stop migrants on his aim to reach European land. And even the Dublin regulation, as you know, uh, provokes a notable re rejection uh, among the on-arrival countries. Do uh, you think in this case the European Union uh, will uh, have to change the migration policy and strategy? Okay, I think there's, uh, you've asked a lot of sort of different and related, but different and quite uh, intricate questions. I think firstly, um, solving the problems of countries from where migrants come. Well, if you look at um, w one of the big factors in migration, it is uh, economic uh, inequality amongst countries. And indeed, if we look at the countries of the southern Mediterranean, such as uh, Italy or Spain or Portugal, we see that, in fact, if you look at the, the history of these countries in the 20th century, you see country, uh, histories of emigration and then these countries becoming um, arrival points, so, uh, so countries of immigration. And so you see that these processes actually can change according to the economic position and political position of countries. Now, there is, an, there is an issue in much of the developing world around inequalities and around how to overcome historical inequalities, how to overcome histories of, of colonialism, how to overcome a legacy, if you like, of, of inequality that exists, and how to implement infrastructures so that young people do not have this desire to leave their countries in order to find a better life, because essentially this is at the root cause of a lot of migration, finding a better life. And I think that as long as the, the problems of development are not addressed, there will always be the desire for migration. Now, uh, the strategy of uh, closed borders position doesn't stop migrants from their aim, because the desire for a better life is a very strong one. Um, what, what, it, what the strategy of closed borders has done is actually make migration into an extremely dangerous uh, process. And it is also a strategy which is actually empowering traffickers and the very, um, very um, difficult and problematic underworld of, of smuggling, smuggling that takes place, the illicit world of migration. Um, which is a very dangerous world for people to enter into. But people enter into it often because of the closed borders policies. 
and because it's the only way in which they can make this dream of a better life come, tr come true. And so, yes, I think we need to rethink the close borders position. It's a complex issue. I don't claim to know the answer to it, but I think it does need a debate, it does need addressing, and it does need some proper reflection on the responsibilities of the richer, more powerful parts of the world towards the less powerful parts of the world. And on um, so, sorry, so in terms of the European Union changing its migration strategy, yes, I think it really does, because apart from anything else, I think there is a huge um, crisis of, of, uh, at humanitarian level that is taking place on the borders of Europe. And that you can see happening, for example, in Ceuta and Melilla and this has been in the press a lot this year with the fences and what is happening around the fences in Melilla with the very dangerous journey that migrants are undertaking both at sea and through land and and I think that yes the, the, the current strategy the current policies do need to be addressed do need to be rethought in terms of a more humanitarian approach and uh, we can consider that uh, maybe the European Union is violating the human rights in some cases as uh, in the coast uh, wars uh, actions or um, some other uh, uh, borders uh, policies? I think that, um, that there is a crisis of human rights. There is a crisis of human rights because people are stepping away from responsibilities because states are uh, stepping away. And this is very clear recently, for example, uh, with the end of the Mare Nostrum um, yeah, you know, um, uh, mission and the fact that the United Kingdom, for example, has withdrawn its financial support for rescue at sea. There, the situation is ever more critical today as we speak. And, and this, is, this is a situation that needs addressing. It's one that is affecting a lot of uh, people in the world and putting the lives of a lot more people who, are, who, who will be embarking on journeys. Because migration is not something we can stop overnight. It's a process. It should not be stopped because I think it is actually, as I said, it's part of the history of humanity. And so it, migration should be embraced as a process. And this requires a complete change of position and perspective from most states and most politicians. Yeah, for sure. It, it seems uh, sometimes that the, the European countries uh, forget, uh, forget the, the migration path that uh, all the European countries uh, have in this matter. And uh, as a representative of an academical think tank uh, working on this topic and also related with the United Nations, uh, how is collaborating the, the United Nations uh, academical field on this uh, issue? What is this, the apportation? Okay. Um, the United Nations University is a think tank of the United Nations system. And one of the um, steps we have taken in this year, in fact, is to join what is called the Global Migration Group. The Global Migration Group is a uh, group made up of 18 agencies of the United Nations system together with the International Organization of Migration and the World Bank. And um, a lot of sort of uh, key issues around migration are being um, looked at very closely by this group and being presented also to the uh, General Secretariat of the United Nations so that migration and issues related to migration can actually be flagged up in the post-2015 agenda and be dealt with then by individual member states. So it's, it's a complex process, but it's one that you, you and you, the United Nations University, is closely involved in and which we feel is an important and powerful route, if you like, towards improving the, um, the ways in which migration is perceived and practiced and um, policies are made around migration in this world today. And, and it's uh, maybe even uh, every time uh, more difficult to implement this kind of uh, directives in, in the countries. The countries are getting every time closer to accept the United Nations uh, recommendations. Well, I think the UN, on the one hand, uh, you know, cannot force the country to take its recommendations, but the UN is a powerful body and it certainly has uh, the ability at least to, to put into the frame uh, the concerns that it has and, uh, and then to work diplomatically with member states in order to, to try and make a difference. And I think that as long as that effort is there 
from a system as big as the United Nations to, to make a change, to improve the world in terms of development, in terms of security, then I think, um, I think at least we are moving in the right direction. Okay, really thanks for your time, uh, Dr. Nair. We hope uh, to talk with you in the near future about other topics. Uh, thank you, m Mrs. Nair. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure. We were listening to uh, Mrs. Parvati Nair, founding director of the United Nations Institute on Globalization, Culture and Mobility, talking about migration issues in Europe and around the world.